<laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for joining me this morning, especially after Bash. Um, so I'm going to jump right in. So what I want to do today is show you a whole bunch of really super cool things you can do with XD to prototype out ideas that you have, and not just on a mobile phone or a desktop, but imagining all the different things you can do with XD that affect your lives, things that you can do to make riding in your car better, maybe talking to your refrigerator, all of these different things that uh, we can use XD for. So what I want to do is I want to build on some of the new features that just came out in XD and show you some of the workflows that we use to sort of imagine some of our ideas. So uh, today I'm going to go through three different projects. The first project is going to be a real project. This actually exists. If you search for Adobe Resource Calculator, you'll come up to this calculator. And so this posed a really uh, challenging design problem because what they wanted to do with this resource calculator was come up with a way to show people how many resources they could save if they stopped printing paper. So all of these organizations are printing tons and tons of paper. And one of the challenges was to take a, a number, like how much water would you save? If you look at five million some gallons of water, that doesn't really mean anything. But if we then take an equivalency and show you how, much, how many loads of laundry that is for you, because you have to imagine one person is actually using this, we can then take that data and make it personal for people. And XD is all about experience, and if we have a story, we can put all of this together and just really make that experience more powerful. And this also means that we have to work with all this data. So as designers, this is a lot of numbers. This is only one snapshot with how much money we're saving, how many pages, how many loads of laundry, how many reams of paper, how many gallons of everything. And so this can be a real pain, um, especially if we got to go through and set all the type. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you ways that we can hook data into XD and make that much more powerful. The second two projects are sort of made up projects, and I'm going to use XD to explain my idea to you and show you how to use XD to get your idea across. So wouldn't it be really cool if when you're in your car or in a search engine and you search for something, if you could have an application run as a search result. So what we're going to do is mock up an idea that you're in your car and you ask your car to find you a local coffee shop, and one of the coffee shops has an application that runs inside search that you can place an order. And then when you're done, you go back to whatever you were doing. So we're going to mock up that entire experience inside of XD, and we're going to hook our voice up to it. So I'm going to talk to XD, and it's going to talk back to me. And then finally, um, after Max, I always look forward to all of the sessions. So whatever session I don't get to go to because I'm doing this or I'm sitting in somebody else's session, I always look forward to Max Online to see when all of the um, videos are available. So wouldn't it be cool if maybe I'm playing a game, playing uh, Xbox or PlayStation, and I could get a notification that all of the videos are available, and maybe it's a game console app where I can watch the videos right on my game console. So I'm going to hook an Xbox controller up to my Mac, and we're going to prototype out an entire experience on a game controller and show our clients what that would look like if we actually were able to watch all the videos through a game console. So it's a little aggressive, but that's um, all the things that we're going to try to uh, cover today. And so with that, I want to start inside of XD. I'm going to start with a blank um, artboard here. And the first thing I want to show is a new feature in XD, which is when you create a component in XD, you now have the ability to create multiple states of a component. And just like with other tools in Creative Cloud, when a feature gets added to a product, not only does that one feature give you um, new capabilities, but if we combine it with existing features, we can actually compound all of those existing features. So we can create more advanced workflows. So I want to demonstrate this on a really simple file because this principle we're going to use in all three of those other designs. So to begin, I have just a simple artboard here inside of XD. And so what I'm going to do is come in here and I'm just going to draw a circle and I'm going to add a text block. We'll add a name in here. I'll just pick some random name. Kim sounds like a great name. I hear some giggles. That's my wife. So I uh, got a little circle here. Let's just fill this in with gray. Looks great. I'm going to select both, click on Repeat Grid, and now I can repeat grid this down. 
Okay, standard feature, one of my favorite features in XD. So what we can do in XD is they extended the architecture in XD so that people could write plugins. So the only plugin I'm going to use for today is going to be a plugin called Google Sheets. And you can find um, any number of plugins inside of XD by going to the file menu and searching for plugins. So Google Sheets allows us to link to online spreadsheets or load CSV files directly into our data. Now a CSV file is just a simple text file. So what I'm going to do is come in here and open this simple text file. Show you what we get with the CSV. It's really just um, quoted text with some commas in there. So when this pops up, we'll just take a quick look at this. You can get a CSV file from any number of online spreadsheets, from Excel, from numbers. So it's just a really simple file. The very top just says names, and then we have all of our different names in there. So really, really simple. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hook in to my file all of those different pieces. So I've got my uh, repeat grid here. I'm going to go to my layers panel. I'm going to select the repeat grid. I'm going to go to plugins, Google Sheets, and I'm going to choose load CSV. I can click on select a CSV file, and let's go over here and grab that names file. I'm going to click open, and the next thing I can do is map the data. So I have an ellipse. This would be little headshots if I was going to make a um, contact sheet. And then down here, it picks up the name of the text that I put in the first text field, and I can map it now to anything in my CSV file. So since I just have the names column, I can just select names, and then I can choose apply. So now all of those names get applied directly into XD. So super cool. If I were to take this artboard, option drag a copy over here, I can go to the second copy, click on repeat grid, I can go to plugins, sheets, load CSV, and I can load a second set of names. Now something interesting happens here. Now I have all of these different items to map. And that's because once we apply different text to every one of those items in the repeat grid, when we map to a new CSV file, every one of those unique text fields now has to be mapped over. So I need to map Mike to names, Lauren to names, Chris to names, Audrey. I can click apply and then those will be reassigned. Not the end of the world, this is fantastic, it's much better than typing all this in. But now that we have the ability to create multiple states in a component, and components can hold anything XD supports, including repeat grids, now I can have a component that contains a repeat grid, and I can make multiple states, and each state can link to a different piece of data. So this is where this gets incredibly powerful. So I'm going to undo all the way back to before I even made a repeat grid. So we're all the way back to the original piece. Same thing as before, I'll hit repeat grid. Now before I do anything, I'm going to actually name this the actual name in the CSV file. So the name of that first column is called names. Now with this repeat grid selected, I'm going to go to the object menu and I'm going to make this into a component. So I'm going to choose command or control K. Now this is a component. And over on the right hand side in my inspector panel, I can see that the component has a default state. The first thing I'm going to do is come over here and click on the plus sign. I'm going to add a new state for this component, and I'll call this list1. Now with list1 selected, I can open up my component, click on my repeat grid, Google Sheets, load CSV. I'm going to do the same workflow. We'll pick names1, click open. It automatically creates the correlation, and now I can click apply. Try that one more time. Load CSV. Click names, open, and apply. There's all of our names. Now I can select the component. So I'm at the component level now. Let's go over here. If I go back to the default state, there's my default state. Let's create a new state in here. This is going to be list two. Once I have list two defined, 
open up my components, my repeat grid. Everything about this particular state is being recorded. Go to repeat grid, go to sheets, load CSV, pick the file, pick names to, open, apply. There's my whole second set of names. You'll also notice I only had one record to deal with. If I go back to my main component state, this is the main state here. Here's list one and here's list two. I can have any number of pieces of data hooked to any number of states in my main component and now I can start to gather more and more data. And where I'm going with this is we're gonna use this technique to create that calculator that's got all that data in there and it would be just really time consuming for us to build all of that. If I wanna make use of this in a design, I can take an artboard, option drag the copy of the artboard, go to the first artboard, activate list one, go to the second artboard, activate list two, and then I can use multiple states in multiple artboards across my entire interactive project. Okay, feeling good about that so far? Great, right, so all you have to do. You can just nod, I just wanna know that we're gonna forge ahead on the next one. So we're gonna use these exact principles for the rest of all of these different examples. So I'm gonna close this file and let's jump into the calculator. So I'm gonna start inside of the calculator into a project like this. So this is typically how we would start to work on a project like this. We get our design inside of XD, lay out everything in the left-hand side, everything's properly named, nothing's called untitled. Um, that gives me hives if I see untitled. So we painfully labeled everything and made sure that everything was super organized and set up. So for this project, what I was mentioning before is one of the things that we were doing inside of this um, particular project was setting this up so that as you were interacting with this calculator, we were not only showing you how much of a resource you were saving, but making an equivalency to a person. Because even though it might be a giant corporation, individual people are using this calculator. So we want you to know how many days worth of uh, driving a car of energy you're using. So again, that becomes a lot of data. So it's really great if we can be able to start to share all of that data with the people who are actually doing all the calculations. So here I have a whole series of Google spreadsheets. So in my account here, I have uh, four of them set up here. So what if we stopped printing 710 pages? So I can create a spreadsheet and then share this, or this can be shared with me. And in here I can see all of these different properties. So resource measurement, uh, gallons for the water, pounds for wood, how many this is, the equivalency value, and the loads of laundry. So this is incredibly accurate, this is incredibly boring. As designers, we wanna make this experience uh, super cool. The other thing we wanted to do with this experience is we wanted to make it so that you could accidentally make a calculation. So the idea was if we had a slider down here, if you just tapped on the slider and you could accidentally drag it a little bit, you would start creating some calculations. So that was our idea. We wanted you to have this knowledge and we wanted the equivalency to speak to you personally. And so this is the whole interface that was gonna make all of that possible. So now for this particular project, we do have the advantage of having the final project. So the final project looks like this. So after it's been programmed, you can click on the slider, you can drag this back and forth, and everything is calculated in real time. We can change currencies down here, we can change the frequency that you print, we can change the measurement from empirical to metric. But the really enticing thing about this is as you click and drag this, you start reading all of these little pieces, like how many loads of laundry, how many trees does this all save? So um, we built this for Adobe. They're uh, partnering with a couple of other uh, agencies and governments like uh, Government of Utah and Hawaii um, and some global organizations. And just as a side note, this can go up to a million pages per day we're going to need to be increasing the number on this just to give you an idea of how much uh, companies are printing across the world. Uh, so that's just an interesting note. So again, to get everybody sort of engaged in this amount of content, I'm gonna come back here and let's start with our 220,000 pages per week. So that's gonna be our basis here. So back inside of my XD document, I'm gonna come in here, select this resource folder, open this up, and here are all of our text files that are going to be part of this um, complete project. And so inside of here, what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna open this file up real quick. And so what I'm gonna do in this main file is we're going to select the resource folder. I'm gonna hit repeat grid. 
Now I can click and drag, and I can drag out five copies of this. Get between the two, move these around. Everything in that repeat grid is completely live. Now I'll come down here and select the pages selected group. And I've gone ahead and named everything in here, inside of XD, the exact names that are inside of my Google spreadsheet. So resource management, type, all of these top values match everything inside of my XD document. So with this folder selected, I'll go to my plugins. I'll go to paste public URL from a Google sheet. Then I can go over to Google, go into share. From the share menu, we want to come down and choose more. And make sure you turn on create a public link. This is how you can share your spreadsheet data. And this isn't just tied to Google. This is just one way you can do this with spreadsheets. So um, we've got our public link. I'll hit share. I'm going to hit copy link right here. Click done. Go back to XD, and I can paste that URL right into here and click continue. So now XD will show me everything that maps to that. So these two items show up. And notice if I click on this drop down menu, I can pick any piece of data from that sheet. So here's our savings, here's our pages. Everything else has no mapping that is in that group. So these two things look great. I'll click apply, and there's our two numbers that show up in there. Go back to the spreadsheet. These are the two numbers showing up over here. Let's go back to our repeat grid. Let's click on resource. Same thing, sheets, public link. I'll paste in the same URL. Paste, hit continue. It's going to find all of these pieces that match. Equivalency measure, equivalency value, resource type measurement. I can go down here and click apply. If I have one that I misnamed, I can just close that real quick and show you what would happen if I didn't misname my column. And here's all the data that is showing up um, inside of here as well. So if we go back to our sheet and move this down, we can see water down here, 1,224,000 gallons. I can see that showing up here. The equivalency is 32,000 loads of laundry. And all of this data gets populated here. So now, just like before, I can put this whole thing in a component make multiple pages, link each component instance with its state to a different sheet in my Google document. So my Google Docs, I have these four settings here. I can go in and create four final artboards. So before I show you the final artboards, the last thing I want to do is come in here and add our artwork. So I've got a repeat grid here. Let's go back to my file. I'll open up my data. I have a whole bunch of icons here. So here's our washing machine, trees, paper, car and refrigerator. The order that these show up in the operating system is the order they'll be applied to the repeat grid if I simply grab this number of folders and just drop them in. So I'll grab all five of these, and I can drop them on any one of these little squares in here. And when I let go, all those icons will be assigned to every one of the items in the repeat grid. Let's so do the same thing for resources. Let's come in here. These are the graphics for water, trees, waste, greenhouse gases, and energy. Marquee select, we'll grab all these, drag them into any one of the top background graphics, and quickly apply all of the graphics into there as well. So the order that the files show up in the operating system is the order they'll be applied to the repeat grid. And you can do this for hundreds of files if you have all of them. You create a repeat grid, move it out, name all your files, and just drop them in. You can also do this onesie twosie as well. I can grab waste, for example, and just drop it into one uh, specific spot here too. But it just makes it much faster if you have everything in one group and you can just bring them all over. So if we skip ahead a little bit, when we have all of our final artboards all hooked up to individual Google Sheets, we end up with something like this, where I can come in here and take a look at all of this data. So think about how long this would take to lay this out in more traditional tools. We would have to get spreadsheets. We'd have to type in these text blocks, option drag things around. But all of this stuff can be hooked into here and if there's any changes, I can select one of these objects, go to the plugins, Google Sheets, and choose Refresh Content. So if somebody has told me that they have updated that data in my local CSV file, on a shared drive, on Google Docs, or any type of cloud-based spreadsheet, all that data will get flowed in and look fantastic. So now there's two things I can do with sharing this content. With something like this, the interactivity isn't really intense. It's just a slider that moves back and forth. 
So what I might need to do is simply take all of these artboards and just save these out to like a multi-page PDF. So I could go under the file menu and I could just export all of this out to a PDF file, maybe export it out to some sharing uh, place that everybody can get access to, and just sign off on the design and the process. But the other thing I might want to do is I might want to make a prototype out of this. I might want to have uh, people see kind of what I would like to have happen, uh, show it to our developers, and so there's another technique that we can use to sort of simulate something that works like this. Now there's a whole bunch of different calculations that this would do. As we drag the slider, every number in this whole thing is beginning to change. And there's a feature in XD where we can create a drag gesture where an object on the stage, if we click and drag it, we can animate between two artboards. But I need more than that. I need more artboards to create this advanced experience. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to create that experience with two artboards. And what we're gonna do in the two artboards is we're going to take all that data and we're gonna set them up into larger text blocks. So to demonstrate that, I'm gonna zoom up here on one of our resources. Let's click on the first one here. So let's go to water. I'll come down and click on the equivalency. I'm gonna click again to go into the text block. And so what I've done here is I've made a really tall text block with six values in it that all match what's in the spreadsheets, and I created a mask layer above that. So I have this little clip layer here, which is actually behaving like a clipping mask, exactly the way you would do this inside of Illustrator. Shape, artwork underneath, select both, create clipping mask. XD does the same thing, and the icon here actually looks exactly the same as Photoshop and Illustrator's. So we have all of these numbers here, and the key here is, this font size is smaller than this font size, which is smaller than this font size. But all I needed to do is make sure when I have that text block selected that the height of this is 387 pixels. They all have to be the same height because when we animate from one to the other, those, all those text blocks are gonna move together. So if I come up here and select this resource, it's hard to see all the numbers, but this is 387. So to get these to space out, all I did was change the line height. So this one has a different line height than the other one. Let's go down to all the numbers. We'll double click on this. These are all the different values. So 170, 700, all the way up to a million. And then these are all the values that are saved. Everything's masked in. So now what we're gonna do is let's come over here. Let's option drag a copy of that entire artboard. And for the copy, let's come over here and make some changes. Let's double click, let's go into the numbers, let me select this. I'm gonna hold my shift key and use my up arrow, and I'm gonna move the numbers, and notice how they're all moving. All those resources are one repeat grid. The repeat grid can have multiple values or any properties as an override each instance along the entire set of the grid, but if I make a change to any one of the objects that the other ones don't have an override on, they'll all be modified as well. So now I've just moved all of these to their million pages per week state. Let's do the same thing for the equivalencies. Let's come down here, select that. Let's grab this, let's move all of these up. And we'll do the same thing for the number of pages per week. 170, let's drag that up, get up to a million. And then finally, let's come over here and let's bring up the dollar value. Let me zoom out. So now we have those two individual states. So now let's wire this up to create a prototype. So come over here, we'll click on prototype. What I wanna do here is let's select this thumb on the track. I have that selected. Let's click the wire, let's bring this over, let's link it to this artboard. For the trigger, let's come down and set this to a drag. Let's use auto animate. And what Auto Animate does is XD will take any objects that appear on both artboards and automatically animate, that's why they call it that, the different properties. So anything that I've changed, opacity, scaling, rotation, anything I can change in XD will become part of that animation. And the fact that it's on a drag means it will animate at the speed that I drag this object. So it gives me this really um, intense uh, sort of feedback piece there. We're gonna go to page 1.1 and we don't have to do any easing or anything because we are controlling the animation. Once we're over here, let's come down here to this thumb. Now when we're on this page, the thumb should be all the way at the end. So let me switch back to design view real quick. 
let me just move this out to the end. I'm also going to come in here and let's go inside of the track. Let's find this small little rectangle here. And let's extend this as well. So it looks like the track bar fills up. Back to prototype mode. Click on the thumb. And let's wire this back to the original page. XD remembers all the last settings, so drag, auto animate. Let's zoom out. Now to test this, we can come up here, hit play. And now we can come in here, grab the thumb, and drag this back and forth. And we get something that feels almost like exactly what we had before. We're only using two art boards. We took the time to set all of these individual items up so that each text block was the same height, changed the line height so everything matched. And it looks like we have a six state drag animation set from just two art boards inside of XD. Now, if we want to take a look at how this feels on an iPad, because the original design we had, we actually had the slider above the numbers. The slider was up here. And on a computer, that felt completely fine. But when we tested this on a mobile device, the first thing we realized is when we put our hand over top of the numbers to drag the slider, we couldn't see the, the uh, numbers changing the savings. So it really helps to look at things on a device as well. So I have a device up here. And so what I want to do is on my iPad here, I'm running the XD application on the iPad. This is connected through a USB cable. So with XD open in the background, let me move this over here. I want you to see everything at once. So here's our XD artboard. It's our live screen in the back. I'm going to come down here on the iPad. I'm going to tap on live preview. Whatever document I have open in XD is what's going to show up on the iPad. And this is a real-time collaboration between XD and the device. So if I click on this option, for example, switch to design view and move these around, this moves around in real time on my iPad as well. So if you're not quite sure how the font's going to look or the design or how it's going to fit, you can hook this up to your mobile device through a USB cable and see all of your designs in real time. We can also go into preview mode. And I can actually come in here on my iPad and interact with this on my iPad. So now I can tap and drag and see exactly what this feels like. So when the slider was above the numbers, my finger was in the way of me seeing those numbers. So I immediately realized we're going to need to modify the, the layout. So it becomes really important to make sure that you look at the experience in all different areas so that we can make sure that uh, everything is optimal for those pieces. So that's the first example. All kinds of cool stuff, live data, and a way that you can actually get more than one state um, in the drag effect, so as long as you make sure everything in XD sort of lines up. Uh, just gives you sort of another dimension to that uh, single drag capability that we have uh, for those pieces. So with that, I want to move into our next idea, which is this idea of having uh, an application that could run inside of Search. And so when you're working inside of XD, you're going to come up with your own sort of workflows for how you want to put your content together. So one thing that I like to do, I like to have an artboard that I call master components. Um, and the reason that I do this, this is, again, just my personal preference, is that I want to know where all of my master components are when I'm working inside of my layouts. So I like to create a master component one, and when I come in here and select any of my components, I can see this little green triangle here at the top. This indicates to me that every one of these is a master. And what that means is when we modify a master component, any of the children will be modified unless they have an override that's been specified. So to demonstrate this real quick, if I came into this component here, this button, this is the same button that's being used down here in this little messiness that we're going to uh, attack in a minute. So if I came in here and I made a change, like I rotated the text around, all of the text will change in this miniature repeat grid in this app component, um, but the colors will not change because they have been overridden locally. So this is not a new feature here. But the fact that we can change this content, have it flow, and the fact that we can have multiple states still picks up this piece. So again, we're compounding all of these features into the things that we can start to do. So what I want to do here, this is going to be the application that's going to let us go through and um, order some coffee while we're driving in our car. So the first thing I might do is sort of play with some ideas with some interactivity and some layout to get this design um, kind of working a little bit so we can see if, if we like the direction we're going in. 
So I'm going to start by clicking on this option here. This entire thing is a component. I've named it Coffee App. And if I open up the component, I can see all of the items inside. I have a masking group here, which just masks this to this entire shape. We can toggle this open. Here's my clipping area. And then we have a whole bunch of different pages or options inside of here. So what I've done is I've taken every piece of art that controls the states of this little interaction here and put them all in the same component. And so what I can do with my component states is I can activate these. I can turn them on and off. So I'm going to go back to the main state. This is called the default state. And so for the default state, let's come in here and let's turn off the latte sizes. Let's turn off the latte art. I'm going to turn off the map. I'm just hiding these layers. I'm not really deleting them or anything like that. And let's go back and get all the way to, we've got our repeat grid showing up here. And showing this bottom piece. So we get all the way back to, this is going to be our sort of main menu screen here. And we need a little bit of room at the top for our title bar. And we'll take a look at that in a few minutes. So now I click away, and this is the new default state for that application. So now I'll come in here, click the plus sign, just like we did before. I'm going to add a new state. And I'm going to name this the menu state. Now it's going to look exactly like the default state, but I like to create another one because this is the one we're going to add some interactivity to. So again, my personal preference, I like the default state to look like the main application piece, especially when it's in a larger project, which is what we're going to bring this into, um, so that I can sort of identify this on my main stage. So here's our menu stage. I'll go back to default. Let's come down and create a new state. And once we decide we want a latte, the next thing we're going to be asked is what size. So I'll name this one latte size. Now with this state selected, I'll come over here to the coffee composition, open up a uh, mask group. Let's come in here and I want to know what size. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this background graphic. I need some room on here, so I'm going to use my arrow keys. I'm just going to move the coffee cup over to the left. Right about here, we want to see both the bear's eyes. We're going to take the navigation menu. We're going to hide that. I'm going to take the coffee shop logo right here. I'm going to move this over a little bit. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to turn on a couple of our options here. So we're going to turn on the options for the beverage size and the latte title. Yeah, I can select these. Let's bring the latte title down. Basically, I'm coming in here and I'm just sort of redesigning all of the pieces inside of this state. So we'll bring these down here, grab the latte title, we'll bring this down. Logo's a little big, let's come in here and just scale this down. The logo's also a component, but I'm treating this as just sort of a graphic component. So I've turned off the responsive uh, design phase over here so that this will not respond to um, having the items inside respond to their individual sizes. This will treat this like a regular graphic. Oops, so I'll just move this down into place. So I'm going in here and just sort of putting this new sort of layout together. So now when I click away, this is the state of that component when it's in its latte size state. If I go back to menu, it looks like this. And then there's our default state. So from the latte state, let's come down, let's add one more state just for demonstration. And this is going to be the uh, latte art. So we're going to create our art state. We'll do the same thing. We'll come into our layers. When we want to pick the art, we're going to bring up another photograph, and we're going to bring up some text. So you can choose what you like, and we'll turn off the other two latte pieces. Move my layers around. So uh, when this comes up, you can actually choose the type of art because they have a latte artist, and you can actually um, pick what design you'd like on there. And so this is going to be the latte art state. OK, so we're good so far. So this is what all of the different states are giving us, the ability to um, create all of these different um, sort of variations inside of this one object. If you're familiar with layer comps inside of Photoshop, this works exactly the same way as that. So now at this point, I can come in and start to prototype this. So I'm going to create a couple of links inside of here, and then we're going to jump into another file and start to um, work with some audio. So you might want to create a clickable version for two reasons. One, if you're in the car and the passenger is there, the passenger can actually touch the screen and advance this. And two, if you want to be able to share this on the web and your clients just want to click it with a mouse or a trackpad or a touch device, 
they don't have to speak to it or anything. They can just sort of click around. So to demonstrate that, and this, we saw this in the keynote as well, if we come back to the main uh, composition here, I'm going to set this to the main menu state. From the menu state, let's go to the prototype. From prototype, let's double click. And for purposes of the prototype, I'm going to link all of these buttons to the same. Everybody's getting a latte, regardless of what you click. So I'll come over here and I'll click on the plus sign here. And now since I'm inside a component right now and I'm adding some prototyping tools, if I use the tap option, I can come in here and choose something like auto animate. And I can also choose from all of the different states of this component in this object. So I can come in here and go to latte size, ease out, and we'll do this at about uh, 0.65 seconds. So 0.65s. So when I click on this, the component itself is going to switch or animate into that secondary state. So now on the main component, let's set this to the latte size state. So now I'm in the latte size state. Let's come down here. If you click on medium, come down here and select this. Same thing. Doesn't matter what you click, you're getting a medium. Let's go in here and click on that. We're going to do the same thing, tap auto animate, and we're going to go to the latte art screen, ease out 0.65. So now from the main screen, we're going to come back and set this back to the menu. And now if I come in here and click play, and we want to preview this, I can come in here, I can click on latte. Ah, isn't that cool? It animates to the second state. Click on medium, that animates to the next state. So all of that interactivity is now being built into that one single component. And all of the animations are being controlled by setting auto animate to go between all the different states. So let, let's take a look at adding a little bit of, um, of audio into our project as well. So at this point, we can create all of those prototyping pieces by, again, having the tap gesture or the tap event assigned to these individual states in here. Now, if I want to go beyond tapping, I want to go into audio or even game controllers, what I need to do is I need to create multiple artboards and activate the different um, component states on those individual artboards. And so the reason we need to do that is because there's so many things I could say and there's so many buttons and other types of inputs on different platforms. So what I'm going to do is we're going to select the main app. I'll set it back to its menu state. I'm going to come in here in the design view. I'm going to hit copy. And let's go over here and hit paste. And we're going to paste that into the first artboard over here. So now on this first artboard, we have menu selected. I'm going to option drag a copy. From this artboard on the second one, let's come over here and set this one to latte size. Then I'll make a third one and we'll set this one down to latte art. Now what's also fantastic about this is if I go back to my master component, change the state to latte size, come in here and make a change to latte size, what we'll see is notice the latte size artboard still gets updated. I still have a dynamic link between the states on the master component on my master artboard to the individual state of the component on its individual artboard. So it can take a little getting used to, but the power is just incredible here because I just can wield great power and control over my entire layout from one particular spot. So now the other thing that I like to do when I'm working with media or mediums, whatever the word is, that we can't uh, click on or see, I'll make another set of symbols that I'll use as the objects that will be the trigger. So if I want this artboard to react to my voice, I need to have something in the artboard that's going to listen to see if I'm saying anything. Now typically I will apply events like a clicking event to actual objects within the layout. So if I wanted to link this to the artboard for example, let's do that real quick. So if I hit prototype, I can click on this option here like latte and I can just click and drag and link this over to the other artboard. That's a tap, it's auto animate, we can set our easing and so forth. But when I have an audio cue, I can pick anything here and attach it to the audio cue, but then later on I might not remember what I actually attached that to. 
So what I'd like to do for game controllers and for audio is to create a little piece of art that I'm going to put on all of the different pages. And I put this in a component because once I'm done, I can go to the master component and set the opacity to zero, and the opacity will be set for every single artboard. So I can get rid of it when I want to prototype it. I can bring it all back when I want to work with it. So I'm going to come in here and select this symbol here. So this is called the listener. I'll hit copy. Let's come over here to this first artboard. I'm going to paste that here. And this is going to listen for when I would like to order a latte. So I can put this anywhere. I usually tend to put it a little bit near where it's actually controlling. Now over here in my artboard, let's say Commander Control G. I'm going to create a group. I'm going to call this audio. I'm going to sort of quarantine all of my audio pieces. And this is actually going to listen for whether I'm going to order a latte. So again, I just do this so that I can go back later and be able to update and control all of this. So now I'm going to select this. Let's go to our prototype mode. And what we're going to do is with this object, I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to link the speaker to the second artboard. And then over in our inspector panel, we're going to come in here and set the interaction type. So I'm going to come in here and set the type to voice. And down here, I can type in what I want XD to listen to or listen for for me to go to uh, a latte. So I'm just going to type in the word latte. We're going to auto animate. We're going to do all the same things we did before. We're going to do an ease out. 0.65 seems a little long since we're already in that state. So we'll bring this down to maybe 0.4 point, point seconds and then press return. So now I've got this speaker here that's kind of listening. So to test this, I can come over here hit play or preview. Showing up here, it's listening to me. Now for me to talk to it, I'm going to hit the space bar and say latte. I'll have a latte. I can let go. XD picked out the word latte and then advances me to the next screen. So that worked great. So let's come over here. Let's select the audio group. Yay, what's that? that was kind of fun. Let's go to the next one. Let's hit paste. Let's change the name. This is listening to go to art. Or no, actually, uh, listening to uh, see if I say medium. So I'm ordering a medium latte. And I can also have the machine talk back to me as well. So we're going to link this back to here. Then I'm going to go into a text file where we've sort of written a script. And so this is uh, everything we want to have happen throughout our audio. So if I come in here, so what sizes would you like? Let's hit um, copy here. So now when I say that I want a latte, we're going to get to this screen. We have another listener event that's going to listen to bring us to the place where we can pick the artwork we would like. But if I click on the main artboard here, and this is highlighted in blue, I can come over here and add an interaction here. And what I want to do is add a timed action and the timed action is going to be speech playback. We'll set this to Joanna, and I'm going to paste in this content. So now when we're on this artboard, and I say I would like a latte, we're going to auto animate to this artboard, and then the machine's going to talk back to me, and it's going to tell me what's available once we do that. So let's test that. I'll hit Command Return. Hold the space bar. I'll have a latte. Would you like a small, medium, or large latte? The sizes are 8, 16, or 24 ounce size cups. <laughs> Pretty cool. I'll have a medium. <laughs> and then I can hook up medium. I forgot to type medium in for the listener. And then we can go to the, the next phase. All right. Good so far? Just a little nod? OK. So now, oh, oh it's going to get crazy. <laughs> I do like the enthusiasm over here, though, wherever that came from. So. This is super cool and everything, but the thing that's not realistic about this at this point is we don't just interact with an app like this all by itself. This app is going to be in an entire environment. And the idea here, the whole sort of concept that I wanted to push was this idea of having an application that runs inside a search, which means you're doing something. You decide to search. Search comes back and gives you the option to do something extra and then go back out of it. So I really want to simulate the entire experience for where this is going to happen 
And what I'm going to do is put all of this inside of an environment. So we'll start with the beginning parts of the environment. I'll show you how this is put together, and then we'll uh, show you the whole thing sort of wired up. So the first thing that I did is I created four individual applications. And this is where you can sort of storyboard an XD, you can draw in a notebook. What would this um, scenario really be like if we were going to use this application? Uh, so if we were in a car, we would probably be driving. I don't know if you guys notice, you're all getting rickrolled right now. We would all be driving, we'd be listening to music, and then we would talk to our car, or the driver next to us might tap and say, hey, I want to find something. And you might say, hey, I want a cup of coffee. So then we would have a, we'd go from the music application to the search results screen, and the search results would come up, and then here's where part of the idea comes in. Some of the search results might have the option for you to interact with them. So maybe the coffee house actually put together an application partnered with a search engine and said, if somebody wants a cup of coffee and they're within our geolocation, you can place an order. We'll give you an API. So now the search result comes back. It says to me, hey, I can order from this particular place if you'd like. You know, the other places have many more locations, but you're near us and we can place an order. And I say, great. Then we go into the coffee app that we just prototyped in the last example. Once we do that, the coffee app can then send off to the directions application and track our directions. And then when we're done, we can go back to playing our music app. So it's a lot of things going on, but our lives are complicated. And this is how intricate this would be. So we're now going to put our entire experience into this real world example. So just like before, I have all of my um, buttons and everything set up. So if I come down here, for example, again, just to demonstrate this, everything's a component. Everything are repeat grids. Notice the coffee house, the order button, everything is all hooked together. And then the third little thing we have, fourth thing, or however many we're at now, is this little, title, little tiny title bar. And this is its own little application. And I have this separated because as you're using the app, I want the title bar to be there the whole time. At the larger level, imagine all of this is really part of one application. Imagine this whole thing is part of the entire operating system of a dashboard in a car. So the navigation system, search, the app, and the music is all part of one full system. So this gives me all the little pieces that I need. If I click on each one of these little individual items, like the music, for example, I have a mini player state. So here's the mini player and the big player. For the map, we have two different states. I have the default state, and then I have the zoomed in state. Oh, and look, the coffee house is right here in the Microsoft Theater. Oh, that's so cool. The main app here, we can come in here, and I can go through all these different size states. So just like we did before, every one of these just has a couple of different uh, design states. And then finally, I have one component here called Car Dashboard. If I open this up, I got an image from Adobe Stock. I cut out the center here. And all of these will fit perfectly inside of that car dashboard. So now when I zoom out, what I did is I just put the car dashboard in every one of these. When I want to work on these applications, I can go to the master component artboard, come in here, just hide the dashboard, hides it for everything else. You can see all my little speakers up here as well. And then what I did is I just went from artboard to artboard. So on the very first artboard, we have our music playing. I have a title bar at the top. I can double click on these and I can type in the new titles. So we're listening to satellite radio and the search component is on the page just below. And the car dashboard, the little hole I cut out in Photoshop is hiding the rest of this art. So when we go from this artboard to this artboard, I just moved my components up. So when we actually run this, we're gonna get this really uh, immersive experience. From the order, we're gonna come down then we're, our app's going to come in here, and then our app is going to run inside of itself for a couple of frames. We're going to be able to pick the latte, pick the size, do the directions. And then when we get to the end, the uh, thing will tell us how long it's going to take. And then we have our little music app in its mini player state. And then the machine will ask us if we'd like to continue listening to our music. This will animate back to the original state. So the one thing that you want to do when you're creating the prototypes, we'll take a look at the final here, is you want to make sure that you complete one entire user task. 
when we put this together for the calculator, the user task was to be able to take the slider and drag it from the beginning to the end. That was one full task. We gave people a lot of feedback. Here, we want to be able to have people start an action, walk them through the entire experience, and then go back to the beginning. That creates one full task and shows us if the experience that we put together is actually going to be um, useful for somebody who's using this. So let's test this. I'll hit Command Return. So we're driving in our car. We decide that we would like to get some coffee. Find me a coffee shop. Here's some coffee shops near you. I can place an order for you at Take Coffee Shop. Oh, sweet. Yeah, place an order. They offer custom blends of coffee and tea, but the specializing lattes. So now imagine that everything that's happening now, a company created their app and paid for it, and they sort of have control a little bit for what's happening in this environment. They can push promotions. They can do anything that we need. I'll have a latte. A latte. A lot of traffic. You know, it's like really a loud. Small, medium or large latte. The sizes are 8, 16, or 24 ounce size cups. A medium, please. I like to be polite to the, the machine. And lastly, their latte artist can illustrate a tulip, a bear, or a rose on your latte. I'll have the teddy bear. So now the directions Here's come up. the directions to the coffee shop. Your order will be ready when you arrive in 12 minutes. Would you like to continue listening to your music? Yes. Then we go all the way back to the beginning. Now we've fully completed one entire user task for that entire process. <laughs> so in the beginning, when I was explaining this idea, oh, it'll be this in-app thing. It'll, you can, it, it's an app, but it's in search, but then you leave. It's really hard to explain all that kind of stuff. But if I spend the time here in XD and just walk people through it, everyone gets that idea. And if, uh, you know, any of the big search engines are listening, um, you know, call me. Um, okay, so for the next one, let's come in and take a look at working with our gamepad. So for this example, I want to do something very similar. Oh, and by the way, um, I'll be taking questions at about 20 after, which is in about um, 12 minutes or so. So there are some microphones set up. Forgot to say that before. Um, so what we're going to do here is I have set everything up in here exactly the same way we have set up um, everything else. We have our master components. Again, this is the way I like to work. So I have a game here. This is a game that we're, um, so pretend I'm playing this game when I get notified that all of the videos are available from Max Online. So the idea here is maybe there's an application that's running on my game console. Or maybe there's an application that's running on my television, my smart TV. Um, in either case, I'm you know, using my game controller. Um, I'm working on this. And um, I want to use my game controller to continue to go through that entire experience. And so that's going to give me this really sort of extra dimension to um, hooking in some of my content into my XD experience. So I have all the same things we had before. I have a label. So here is a small notification. So if I click on the notification, I can go to my intro state and the hover state. In the intro state, if I open this up, what I did is I went into the logo. Let me unhide this for a minute. Set the opacity. I set the artwork, and I just moved all of the artwork around a little bit. So I took the Max logo. Don't, don't tell Adobe. I took the Max logo and I just rotated all the triangles around to sort of make um, this sort of interesting shape. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to auto animate this. So this is going to be the notification that's going to pop up while I'm playing my game. And so it's going to sort of animate into place. And then it's going to let me know that all of the Max videos are available. So that's what we're going to do with the, um, this notification here. Next, I have this little icon here, which is going to be the highlight. So as I go through this experience, it's going to highlight each one of these items down in the video channel. And I'm going to hook that up to the left controller on the, um, the left thumb controller on the gamepad. I can also set this to have a blend mode. If I double click into here, I can click on this ex uh, exclusion, which is actually created by two different shapes excluded in XD. 
By the way, all of the um, Boolean transforms are live in XD. So it's like Pathfinder and Illustrator, but they are completely live. And I used the blend mode set to screen. Since we've got this nice rainbow color in the background to match the branding of this conference, I've got this red highlight, but the red's going to interact with the colors differently as it sort of goes through. So we've got this live blending mode of this object that we're going to be working with as well. And then, of course, this piece is wrapped up in its own component. And then we have the main sort of Mac application. So if I open this up, if we can see we have our Max logo at the top. We have our masking group. I have a video list. The video list actually hooks to a CSV file with everybody's name, so all of these titles. Once you get used to hooking in with data, you'll never type anything else again. Or if you do, you'll type it in the, the data or get your friends to do it. And uh, you just hook that data into here so you don't have to type it back out. And if I come back to the main application, let's come down. This is going to be the intro state. Because imagine, again, I'm, I'm in the middle of doing something, and when this starts, I want to have this sort of start black, which will give me the impression that I'm exiting one application and going into another. Then from there, we're going to go into our title screen. Then this is going to give the application a chance to load all the videos. That's going to bring us into our, um, our scrolling option. And then I have two different states here. I have the, um, after the title, this is going to pop up. We're going to get into our... Where's the intro? Oh, our default state. So go to the default state here, and then I have a scrolling state where what I've done is I've taken this repeat grid and just moved it off to the left. And this is how I'm going to simulate having more than one video in my entire screen. And then finally, this is the little shape I'm going to use for anything that's going to be hooked up to the game controller. So for audio, I used a little speaker. For this one, I just have a little um, gold diamond that I'm going to put into place. And so now what I've done is I've gone through here. So in this particular example, I just have the two artboards set up. And let's take a look at how we would start to wire some of this together. So anybody who's, I know this is being recorded and my friends are going to see this. Uh, pretend I'm actually playing a video game. I'm the worst gamer ever. My friends invite me into Grand Theft Auto because they like to watch me try to not fly my helicopter into a building or set myself on fire. <laughs> they find this entertaining for some reason. Um, so let's just pretend I'm playing a video game. And uh, inside the game, what we're going to be doing is, you know, just playing. And then once we get to the point where the videos are available, we're going to have this notification that's going to pop up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and click on the playing option here. Let's go to our prototyping mode. And from playing, we're going to create a time-based event. I'm going to choose auto animate, and we're going to auto animate down to the notification page. So that's going to bring us down here. It's going to take 1.6 seconds. On the first page, I have the notification sitting here. And it, the notification is in its intro state. There's also a hover state, so if I move my mouse, it'll create a hover. And then on the second screen, the notification is in its default state here. And if you remember, I took all the max triangles, I moved them around, they're set to the opacity of zero. So now when I hit play, this is going to play, it's going to go to this artboard, it's going to automatically time transition to the second artboard where this piece here will do its animation. So it's going to animate at the same time. So to test that, I can just hit command return. We'll wait a couple of seconds, I'm playing my game, pew pew. And then it says, hey, by the way, all of the max conference stuff is available. Do you want to watch all this stuff now? So that's the beginning of that. So now let's hook up our game controller and let's create something that will allow me to sort of go into this application. So I'm going to option drag a copy of this entire artboard. Let's bring this down here. Let's go into our design view. So in the design view, I'm going to take the video game. Let's just zoom this down a little bit. Let's go back to our main artboard. I'm going to simply come in here and copy that. Let's paste it in here. So that's going to come up on the front. And then let's come in here to the notification artboard. I put all of the controls into game controller. So let's grab one of these. Let's grab exit. Let's duplicate that. Gives me another copy. So I just like to put these somewhere close to where they're going to be. So this is going to launch our Max application. So I'll just name this Max. 
And now to make this work, let's go to prototype mode. I'll remove the effect from here. And now I have a game controller hooked up. So to hook up a game controller to your Mac or Windows machine, on the Mac you can go into your Bluetooth settings, turn on your um, wireless, sorry, turn on your Bluetooth device, put it in discovery mode. Once it's connected, we'll see that the controller is connected down here. When this is connected, XD can pick this up and realize anything that I'm doing inside of this document. So let's go in and let's bring up the video camera again. So now you can see I'm holding the Xbox controller. Over here on the right, I have my XD experience. Let's move this over. Let's come down. Let's select that yellow triangle. Let's come over here and add an interaction. Let's come down and choose game and keypad. Now down here for the key, in audio, I could type in what I want to listen for. If I type in down here with the gamepad or keyboard selected, I can now come in here to the controller and start to just use the controller. So if I type the Y key, notice how it picks that out inside of XD and it maps it to the Y key on the controller. I can do A, X, I can do menu, I can do any of the analog controls, or the digital pad, the analog controls, the triggers, anything that I want to hit, XD is going to pick that up. <laughs> Pretty sweet. So let's come in here. This is super fun, by the way. All right, so let's hit the A key. Again, I'm a terrible gamer, but usually when I hit A, I go, like, go into stuff. So let's try to keep some of the conventions from the gaming world. So if I hit A, A is going to let me go from the artboard I'm on. We're going to auto animate down to the menu max down here. So now I'm going to hit command return. I'm going to play this. We're going to wait a couple seconds. Our notification is going to come up. I still have the triangles there. And now I'm going to hit the A key. And A is going to bring me to I want to go to artboard one. <laughs> there we go. Oh, no, I want to go to the notification one. Yeah, I should have named that better. My bad. Let's call it Max. There we go. So now we'll come in here and we'll link this. Come on. There we go. We're going to link it down here instead. So then I can, if I have this artboard selected, I can just hit that real quick, hit the A key. Now we go over to Max. So now let's take a look at this entire experience, <laughs> thank you, all at once. And then we'll take a couple of questions. So let's bring up our entire final example. So the other thing, the other thing that I like to do inside of XD is I will take a few seconds and I'll set this up so that I have all of the artboards sort of lined up. And so again, everyone comes up with their own ways to work inside of XD. For me, I like to sort of structure this like I would do a CSS file, everything sort of uh, nested down. And so what I can see from this is from this screen here, I have a couple of listeners that are listening to the game controller. So I'm listening to whether I'm taking the right thumb controller and pushing it right or left. And I'm just cycling through all of these different highlights. So we're going to come up. This is going to fade in. We're going to see max, then the Videos are going to come up. Then when I hit one of my um, uh, gamepad joysticks, we're going to go to the first menu item, then the second, then the third. And you can see the blend mode mixing in there. When I get to this state and I hit the um, joystick to the right, we're going to auto animate to this state where the videos have been adjusted toward the left. So we're going to get this effect where I'm going this way and the um, scroll bar is going to go the opposite direction. It, it's going to feel really natural once we do that. We can do the last two. There's an advanced technique in uh, XD. Let's, that, that looks kind of fun. I hope it comes out okay. And I hope it's really one minute or one hour and uh, 22 minutes. Um, and then if we click on that, we can go into our video playing state. I have a couple of states here. And then finally, we can go actually into the video. So to test this entire experience, I'll hit command return. Going to move this down just a little bit. Let's bring back our video. You can do it. There we go. And so now to play with this entire experience, let's come in here. 
I will launch it again from the beginning. So I'm playing my game. My notification comes up. Let me just close this up a little bit. So in my game controller, I'm going to hit A. We're going to go into our max thing. And actually, just to make this a little bit nicer, let me turn off all those triangles because I don't want to see those. So those are in my master component. Select this guy, open up the trigger, take the rectangle, set the opacity down to zero. Now we'll do the whole thing. So now my notification's gonna come up, I'm playing my game. I can hit X. It's gonna bring me into that environment, background animation, auto animate. Here come my videos. Now with my left thumb, I'm gonna hit this. Now I can animate through this whole thing. When I get to here, I go one more time. It slides over. I can come back. XD is taking care of everything. All I need to do is link to the different artboards. If I hit the X key, this will exit me back out to my game. Let's go in, wait for the videos to come up again. Let's arrow over. And it just, the whole point here is this feels like I'm really working in a game console. Let's go here, let's check this out. Play tutorial, more, add to my favorites. I hit down, it goes back up. Let's play that. So we're watching that. I don't like it anymore. Let's hit X, let's exit back out of there. I also tied the menu to a tiny little artboard so I can hit the menu up and down. That's gonna bring up the menu. And within the menu, I can actually start to animate through. Maybe go back to television, go home, or come down here, hit the A key, go back to my game, and I can completely simulate that entire experience inside of XD. Cool. So it's super fun. Uh, I can't see if there's anybody who has questions. Um, if you do, I'll take some questions. If not, um, uh, I have a question. We can look at oh, excellent. Hi. Um, I'm Amy. I'm an experienced designer based out of LA. And I've been working with a, a design problem that I've been having issues prototyping. So um, it's a drag and drop interface with several different buckets that you can drop an object into. And within each bucket, there are two zones. Is that something that's possible to prototype with the next E? You can prototype the action of dropping into each of the buckets as a separate drag um, uh, action. So you could have four artboards. You'd have artboard one that simulates the drag into the first bucket. And then you could have a third artboard that simulates the drag into the second bucket. But you can't do any conditional logic right now with uh, a single drag that would detect where you've actually let go of that object, if, if that helps. So you, so you can simulate the drag to each bucket. You can't do both buckets in one single drag event. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. So um, are, does XD, if you put a video in, does it autoplay? Um, XD right now does not support uh, videos or animated GIFs in the uh, design phase here. So the animations that you're seeing here are all done with the auto animate feature. Sure. And you add a timing event to the artboard and XD will automatically animate to those other artboards based on time, like we're doing here. I start the game, it waits five seconds and then animates to the next state. Okay, um, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm super waiting for a lot of media and to be an XD though. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I've got a question here. Yes. Um, with the first example with the slider, if you want to actually have it have stops, so there's six values, instead of being like one drag across and having all the values float, could you actually do stops or would that be six artboards with a stop for each? Um, you, can't, you can't simulate one full motion with the six stops because when you have a drag event, the object, when you drag to the second artboard, once you're on that second artboard, if you wanted to create another drag from that artboard to the next one, you can, but then you can't go back on the first one. It's still one object that is creating a transition between the two different artboards. Okay, so, so, so if you wanted to do, say, uh, stop one to two, and then two to three, you would have to have like three artboards, you're saying? Yes, but you can't go from two back to one then. Gotcha. So, okay. so what happens is you're on one, you click the thumb, you drag to two, yep. you're now on two because that thumb can only have one action. And you can't have a reverse action to go back 
Right. No, okay. Okay. Right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet. Thank you. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for the awesome presentation. Oh, thank you. Uh, what's the roadmap for conditional logic? I, I don't know. I don't work for Adobe. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I don't know what um, the plans are. They talk a lot about it on the forums. Um, if you want to see some of the roadmap things that they're doing, they do talk about some of the different things up, up on the forums. But I, I don't have access to, to know what that plan would be. Thank you. Uh, I would love it, though. You, uh, you showed us the Google Sheets plugin. Do you have any other plugins that you consider essential? Oh, yeah. There's a JSON plugin that came out just six or seven weeks ago where you can hook directly into a JSON feed, which is incredibly awesome. And if you are working with developers who use REST API, for example, that means you can then construct your own URLs to control the JSON data that gets pulled back. And then you can reassign those objects you define in REST to objects that you have defined inside of your XDR board. Um, and they're adding plugins all the time. There's tons and tons of different companies adding these in. Um, so you can just continue to search for things like uh, dynamic data or live data. Um, but JSON is probably going to become my next favorite from Google Sheets. Great. This was awesome. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, I actually had a question about post design. So exporting to Zeppelin or PDFs, now that we're dealing with multiple states versus multiple artboards, will you be able to export those individually to make sure that the developers see each individual state um, from a development side? If, if you need a, a solid screenshot from an individual state, then you need to put each, define each state as one of the artboards. So like what I did with the first calculator, I made four different artboards so that we could see the states of all the different calculations. That could go right out to a PDF, to multiple ping files. Um, so if you do need to have those static captures, then put each, each one on a different artboard. And we did that specifically for the calculator as well because we just wanted to be able to see that all in a flat state. You can also, I would then duplicate that and make an interactive prototype because I think being able to show the developer things that you have in mind for not only motion, but what items can trigger certain events and how things animate back and forth is going to help a lot as well. And, and there is a share with developer option in XD where XD will uh, basically put the entire document in the Creative Cloud and give your developer like a little shopping cart so they can go through and pick graphics. They can extract CSS rules and properties, and it'll give them sort of extra data that you might not send to the marketing department or to your client in order to see. So the share for developers is a relatively new uh, sharing mechanism inside of XD as well. So check it out. It, it opens up a whole bunch of new stuff, like Extraction did in um, Photoshop for Creative Cloud files. And so that could offer you a whole bunch of opportunities as well. Thanks. Cool. So more or less kind of a, like from a simpler perspective than like the animations, but whenever we're doing repeat grids and we're actually sending something that might be real to developers, when it comes to image, images, repeat grid doesn't seem to retain the file name the same way if you're dra drag and dropping an image into a single asset or square, circle, whatever it might be. Do you have, have you had any workarounds with that? Um, so if you're dropping well, multiple yeah. images into a repeat grid, it doesn't, when you go to like export, you drop into Avacode or Zeppelin or whatever it might be, it's not retaining a file name. And then developers end up naming a file, an image, image 10008.png. Oh. oh, no, I was not aware of that. C because it's stored in the XD file as the name that you dragged in there. So in a repeat know, they, grid they, format? They, yeah, because, well, that's how it's, it's referencing it. Um, it's, and, it Unless it renames it when it pulls it in. I don't, I'm not aware that it's it usually doing that. like It keeps that like same single file name or that, uh, whatever you name that initial instance. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So if, like I was saying before, if, if you share that with the developer, uh, do share for developer, every one of those individual instances across all the repeat grids will show up in a category of images that your developer can go in and pick. So they can go in and sort of cherry pick or make a little shopping cart of images they want to extract out. Yeah, um, but they're going to name them whatever they want or pull them as some sort of random. Right. Um, but as far as the state there, it's XD's mechanism in the repeat grid. You're only working with a single group, and XD is replicating that out right. throughout the entire piece. So when you just look at that at face value or translate that to another application, they're not seeing the intelligence that 
the repeat grid is applying to all that. Right. So there's a, you yeah. haven't had any experience of like actually keeping unique file names when you're doing like the data extrapolation or even just dragging and dropping multiple images into a grid? No. Oh, no. Well, yeah. we did the development on that too. So yeah. <laughs> I had the no, it's ones. great. It's really a useful um, tool. Yeah. It's just when we get to developers, they, they, they won't uniquely name anything or they'll just keep it very random. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, no, it's okay. Yeah, I don't think, I, yeah. yeah, it's not a way to get to uh, the internal naming structure of XD's repeat grid when you bring it into another platform like that. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Hi there. Um, I'm wondering if you have any tips for prototyping searches or catalogs so that we could send the link and someone could type something and hit enter and see a different artwork? Oh, um, you could, you can, um, you can add an event with the keyboard. So when we added the uh, game controller, for example, inside of XD, there's an option that you can choose to say, I'd like to listen to, I'll just grab an item here. You can come in and say the event trigger, for example, is going to be a game in keys. And then you can put in a certain set of keys that somebody needs to type. Um, you, you would trigger something on the first letter, so if I wanted to search for cats, like you might just have the letter C. So when somebody type C-A-T-S, as soon as they hit C, it'll actually just go to that. Um, so that's the only thing that you can do now. Um, and I did the same thing with audio. I typed in just like the word latte, but I can say something like, I would like a latte, please, and it'll wait to see when it sees that. So you can use the key, individual keys, to sort of start that search so that it would look like somebody typed it in, but there's no way right now to type in a full word and hit search or evaluate what they've put in there. Okay, cool. That helps. Thanks. Cool. Cool. All right. I can't tell. All right. I think we're done. Thank you very much for coming out to Advanced Prototyping with XD.